to show you what we have going on here this morning. Uh, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to attach these lights and take them on and off and make it as simple and as safe as possible. One of the problems we have is the underside of this has an indentation in it, like a big radius. And I don't know if you remember, but we solved that problem over here by taking a rod, drilling and tapping it, and then screwing it from the top. Made it extremely sturdy. What we was going to do originally was to have some sheet metal parts bent and then have the lights at approximately a 45 degree but it, it didn't work. We had a hell of a time because of this undercut and no matter which way we tried it the lights weren't going to stay. Uh, we have all kinds of bent up aluminum around here where we tried different things. Stuff like this. Obviously this is not finished. It was kind of like a little bit of a mock-up where we could put it on, put a clamp here, have the light here. The best way would have been to attach them, but you know, from a safety standpoint, it just wasn't, wasn't good. We even mocked up this. I'm just gonna make this out of billet. We could attach this permanently, put the light on. But believe it or not, the best option, and I remember this from the Ranger boat we did, and I kept saying to Michael, where's those chrome bits off the Ranger boat? And he kept on looking at me like I've really lost my mind. And anyway, we found the, we saw the old Ranger 363, and uh, we held it up there and we thought, We're, we've got something here. So Michael found these, on Amazon, I believe. These are motorcycle handle bracket seven eighths, which is the diameter of our rod. And the plan is to attach those, then attach these, point at the 45 degree. So you have some adjustment here. But when he doesn't want the lights on, he can just pull these off. Still obviously have the rail, but it, I think it actually is really nice. I like it. Uh, we're obviously going to have a straight one there. We're going to have a short piece here. And then we're going to we have to attach this one to the trolling motor mount, which we drilled and tapped and helicoiled a hole. And maybe we'll do a little demo on that. Michael has a helicoil set. And you drill it, and then you tap it, an oversized tap, put the helicoil in, etc. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but if you're not, Put a note, comment down below, and we'll do a little video on it. Uh, we bent the pipe using this. This happened to be three quarters, the pipe is seven eighths. Uh, it went really well. Uh, first, we thought we overbent it, and we kind of straightened it up a little bit. Uh, but our first bend was actually probably right. So uh, we kind of just laid it up in here. Obviously, we can't totally match this radius because it's not a natural radius but really nice way it turned out now when you're doing it ends here this is a 60 degree or 30 degree it's pretty close somewhere between 55 and 60 so we've been cutting on right around about 60 or 30 degrees on the saw back there you have to have the angle on it because if you don't have the angle on it then it doesn't sit in the pipe right doesn't sit in the pipe right and so then it's just kind of well that's one of the old ones as you can see it doesn't sit in there right but if you put the right angle on it goes all the way in and it's a lot more sturdy uh, Ranger rivet theirs and I think it's a good idea we're going to rivet the two end ones I think it's a good idea they did that and I think it's a really good idea but this one is for, for here. So you need to cut a 60 degree angle. So when you measure this out, be careful, kind of lay it up there and make sure that you don't end up cutting it short. Obviously too long is better. 
we're going to attach the lights and then we're going to run the wires down either side and we'll do a uh, little video on that etc we had to we're going to have to machine these flat here and we're going to put two washers either side to make it a little more sturdy and then we'll obviously be bolting through this happens to be metric of course we don't have any metric bolts so you had to go get them I like this I really like this in fact if it was up to me I would put another piece back here only for just evening up the boat so uh, 60 degree angle and uh, so we used a chop saw kind of thing we have in the back I think you guys have seen it before so that's kind of what we've got going on here and we'll cut the other piece and a piece for over there and then we'll wire it up okay so uh, as you can see we've got the lights on and uh, couple of opportunities we have right now is our bolts are a little bit too long so these are the only ones we could find here in town so we have to order some shorter ones or try to shorten these up I really hate trying to shorten up bolts because we always have so many problems with the threads so we have to get some shorter bolts but for right now we put more washers than we need in I was going to double washer it anyway because I wanted the thicker flange so I have one more washer than I need and uh, the other thing that we had to do, we had to take the brackets over to the mill, slot them out a little bit bigger. Originally we tried to use the Dremel, but this, believe it or not, this bracket, pretty, pretty good stuff because it just ate up the, the wheels on the Dremel. So finally we took it over to the mill and we put a little, just widened it out. It's kind of difficult to get the six inch vise so we just c-clamped it to one side and then just took our time to open it up a little bit so we can get the bolt in there obviously as you can see we have a lot of adjustment here rotation up down we even have up down here I really like the way it turned out uh, it takes a little bit to get these 10 millimeter bolts in here so you have to kind of move things around but once you, once you kind of get them lined up, it works out pretty well. 17 millimeter obviously is not the best, but you work with what you have. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take all the wires, start to work on getting our wires cleaned up to where this can come on, on and off fairly easily. Get it down here to the little control panel, which we're going to be building here shortly. So that's the update for right now. Okay, so it's uh, Tuesday morning, and uh, we're finally through with the lights. Um, really, really happy with the way this turned out. We, we were waiting on a UPS thing yesterday. Um, just the continuing delivery problems with getting the, the right stuff in. And that's just part of it right now, and there's no point in getting frustrated about it because there's nothing you're going to do about it although I will admit it does frustrate me um, the criteria for this particular part of the job was to so that Mitch could take the lights off if he desired and that's the reason why the wires are running the way they are if you'll notice we have the wires up here where they're out of the way and don't become a trip hazard on the deck. Michael spent quite a bit of time repurposing this box. This box was on the boat when it originally arrived but we have our lights running through here. I just took the battery off because we're about to clean the deck again for about the 20th time. But it all works. You know some of the questions are going to be why did you wire it this way? Well we wired it this way so if, if there's a problem with one of the lights all we've got to do is figure out what light, disconnect it, and replace the light, and you're back in business. So, the goal behind this particular project, this particular part of the project, was to be able to remove the lights. So this here, quick disconnect here. This here goes to the battery. And you all know my feelings about batteries. I believe batteries should be tied down. 
That's up to you, Mitch. Uh, we added these two little chroma thingamabobs here to tie the wires right here to keep them out of the way. And then we added these little rubber uh, deals to the top of the lights. Very easy to come on and off once you take the lights off. Now, as Michael pointed out yesterday, because I left, I got fed up waiting on the UPS guy. When I originally installed these, I had the wires going underneath. You can't do that. So pay attention if you're going to do a project like that. I did not pay attention. So when you try to remove the lights, you wouldn't be able to remove them because obviously the this particular part stays here. Uh, it, I think I think overall it turned out really well. It, it would have been nice if we could have made it symmetrical, but we have to control it motor, and there's, there's you know there's just no way around it. So uh, in the rest of the video, hopefully Michael doesn't edit it too much. Uh, you'll see how we did it, how we cut these, etc. You'll see, even see here, we haven't removed the line yet. So when you go to put this on and cut your angle, because this kind of sits at an angle on here, okay? So kind of line it up and then put a mark on both. So when you when you put it in the chop saw or the saw or whatever, you're able to get your angle right. Because if it, if you have this out of rotation, it won't be right with the angle, okay? So just take a little bit of time on that. Uh, originally we ground it and, uh, you know, so these ones have set screws. I personally think we should pull the set screws out and drill a little hole or countersink them a little bit to drive the set screw in a little bit deeper. We'll do that here in a minute. Uh, but I, I tell you, Michael will do his usual walkthrough on this boat. Uh, and he does a very good job of those. Uh, so I'm not going to go on too much about, you know, I, I have a love-hate relationship with this boat. This is, this boat has, has tested my patience at times. Uh, not partly because, and, and I guess I should just put it out there, because I've been asked by some of my friends why I've you know, kind of got a certain way on this build, but a lot of it had to do with you would assume that the boat would mirror image. So this side of the boat would be the same as that side of the boat, and it's not. And I just couldn't get it past myself, and, and I'm to blame for this, that the boat wasn't you know, symmetrical, and we had to make changes, and we had to do things that I was not happy about, but there was no way around. As you know here, we had to put a shim in this area here to make the deck flat. We, I, I must have spent two days working on that, trying to get figure out why I had to do that. And that just comes a point in time on your build that you've got to say to yourself, it doesn't matter, you just got to do it because there's no other way around it. So on your build, you've got to make those kind of compromises. I, I guess I have a little bit of a problem if I don't understand things and I want to understand them and then I get frustrated and when I get frustrated, I can you know, lose my temper. And so it's kind of like a vicious circle. I really am really happy with the way the boat turned out. I'm really happy that Mitch trusted Michael to do this build. I can't thank him enough. I can't thank him enough. He's running a business also, you know, for taking all my FaceTime calls to go over certain things. I can't thank him enough for that because, you know, you, when you're trying to run a business and, and you're doing something like this, you know, you're trying to run your business too. So I really do appreciate Mitch for that. And, and uh, his input and his guidance. Uh, but I'm really happy now, today. <laughs> I am absolutely ecstatic with the way the boat turned out. And uh, as usual, we kind of made another mistake. I, I really wish we would take a, like a before photograph and an afterwards photograph. I asked Michael yesterday if we had, oh, a couple of days ago, if we had a before photograph. And uh, we do, but we don't. Uh, so I think that's something that we need to work on. And Michael's put a tremendous amount of time into this, and uh, my wife put a tremendous amount of time into this job, uh, and so I can't can't say enough about them. Uh, I believe this will do what Mitch wants it to do, and that's what you you've got to look at what your build is about, and not all builds are the same. And. 
that's part of it. Not all the builds are the same, so you've got to listen to your client, and from your client, then you've got to do the build. And you know, part of the opportunity with a build like this is, as you go along, you make mistakes, and uh, that's just part of it. So, don't get frustrated with your mistake. Uh, mistakes. I, it's funny. I was listening to a guy uh, built a car and went to Bonneville, and he started the car many years ago, and then all of a sudden he realized that he couldn't get in the car and he shelved the build for two years because he screwed up and he you know he couldn't literally get in the car with his helmet and stuff on so a friend of him convinced him to go back to the build and they got it all straightened out so don't get frustrated if things don't quite go the way that you expect because I believe that's part of the build and this is payday for me uh, that is finished uh, you know, I just sent Mitch the text a few minutes ago and, and stuff, so uh, take the time to watch the rest of the videos. It's been an interesting build. We've not documented it as well as we would have liked, but it was under a lot of pressure to get this boat delivered. Not personal pressure, it wasn't from Mitch. I want to make that clear. It was kind of pressuring ourselves to get the boat finished. So uh, take a look at the, the video that will be coming out of what we did, how we did it. And please make any comments that you would like and, and share and subscribe and I appreciate your time. So thank you.